Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Believe You Are a Good Mom podcast. I'm Emily Wardrop from Drop the Word Life Coaching, where we help moms of young kids drop power struggle wars to create more peace in their parenting. Do you want to be a good mom? I will tell you the one simple secret of how to be a good mom. You already are. Don't believe me? You've come to the right place. I'm glad you're here. I've got you. Because when you truly believe you are a good mom, everything will change for you as you live into the truth of who you've always been. Let's get started. Good morning, good morning, my friends. This is Emily Wardrop from Drop the War Life Coaching. And today we are going to talk about the answer to every single one of your problems. (laughs) How does that sound? Sounds fun, huh? So, um, as you may know, if you follow the show, frequently I'm talking about my inherent tuning call in the morning. So I get on a Zoom call with a bunch of other coaches. Not all of us are coaches, actually. And um, and we do a little meditation and prayer together and um, get some revelation. And then we do some breakout rooms and kind of share what we received today. So one of the other coaches on this call helps people with chronic pain. One of the other coaches on this call was having some chronic pain. A couple of us were sick. We were all just kind of a mess. And so I asked the, um, this guy on the call, I'm like, well, this is kind of your jam, chronic pain and all. So what do you have to say about this? (laughs) And he said, well, you know, it's just all about Jesus. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, but really, like, <laughs> and um, so we had this fun conversation about how it is, it's, it's just Jesus. Jesus is the answer. So this morning, when I woke up at five fifteen, it was like, oh, this call isn't until six. <laughs> I guess I'm not gonna quite get up yet. I'm laying there in bed thinking about how Jesus is the answer. So yesterday, I gave this talk at church which my topic was, how does the Savior fit into God's plan? And, um, and I'm going to basically share that talk with you, but under the, under the umbrella of that, Jesus is the answer. Okay. No matter what the problem is, (laughs) Jesus is the answer. No matter what your question is, Jesus is the answer. No matter what you're going through, Jesus can help you. Okay. So, I want you to picture the last time you're hanging out at like a play date, you and your other mom friends are just chatting, you know, the kids are driving you crazy. They won't leave you alone to just get your chat on with your neighbor friend or your girlfriend or whatever. And you're like, um, the point of getting together on this play date is for you guys to have other friends to play with so that I can hang out with my friends, (laughs) but you keep harassing me. You, you know the picture, right? So when was the last time you were just chatting with your friends, complaining about life, complaining about your husband, complaining about your kids, just getting your grape on, you know, and your friend suggests to you that maybe Jesus is the answer. (laughs) Has that ever happened? (laughs) I know for myself, the only time I've ever been brave enough to suggest that in a casual setting like that was when my friend was, you know, admitting to me and telling me that like she's not interested in the church anymore i'm like okay fine but what about jesus you know i'm just curious what she's thinking feeling about jesus himself okay the church whatever but what about jesus right so um but really like he is the answer to all of our problems and there's a reason we continue to wallow in these problems is that we're not tapping into the solution. (laughs) Okay. So if Jesus is the answer, how do we tap into that exactly? Okay. Um, Another scenario, even on a coaching call, right? Maybe you're, um, you understand the power of coaching and you have a coach or you get coached occasionally or whatever. You're listening to coaching calls all the time, trying to manage your mind manage your emotions. But when's the last time you heard a coach suggest to someone that Jesus is the answer? Like we kind of do it in a roundabout way, but how about a really specific way? (laughs) So this is the challenge to myself that I would love to be that coach. I would love to be that friend that suggests an actual solution to their problem through Christ. Like he is the answer. And he always has been. And um, it's about 
time that we take him up on his offer to help us out because that's kind of the whole point. Okay, so let's talk about the whole point, the whole plan, right? So after I gave this talk about um, how the Savior fits into God's plan, and I, you know, did my whole 12 minute spiel on how the Savior fits into this plan, I just felt this overwhelming gratitude that I know this stuff. And it's like, there's so many people in the world that do not know about God's plan of salvation, how the Savior fits in, and how He can actually help us in our lives. And so I can, you know, continue to preach to the choir at church, or I can at least use this little platform that I have of my podcast to share with who knows who's listening that may or may not know about the plan. And if you do know, here's a review. If you don't know, I'm very excited to tell you for the first time about the plan of salvation. So here's the deal. You know, I'm always talking about that we are good. It's just who we are. We always have been long before even this life. So I believe that we've always existed in spirit form. We were, we always were, we didn't have a body yet, but we, we were us, right? But our heavenly parents, they had bodies, they're celestial, glorified, perfect, immortal beings, gods, right? And heavenly father, as our spirit father wanted us to become as he is. And so he prepared this plan so that we can grow and develop and um, become as he is. Okay. So that is the goal. That's the result we're working towards. And in order for that to happen, we couldn't just hang out with him in our pre-earth life as spirits forever. Like we needed to have a place to be separated from him, to forget about all of that in order to be tested, to live by faith, to um, have a, a trial period, in order to learn and grow. And we needed these bodies, right? So he created the earth. He created our bodies. He created this whole plan for our development to become as he is. And, um, and in order for the whole plan to work, we need to have a savior. So Jesus fits into God's plan as the integral piece that makes it all work. Because the idea was he's going to send us down here to earth and we're going to be tried and tested. We have this agency so we can choose. We're going to make the choices. We're going to make bad choices. And as soon as we make one bad choice, no unclean thing can live in the presence of God. And so that would be the end. <laughs> we used to live with him as spirits. He gave us a body, sent us down here. As soon as we make one mistake, whoops, okay, the whole plan is fouled. There's no way to return to live with our Heavenly Father. So that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that would not work. That plan is no thanks. So the way to make the plan work is that we need to have an advocate with the Father. We need to have a Savior. We need to have a Redeemer who makes it, <coughs> who makes it possible for us to even use our agency, make decisions, make bad decisions, be able to repent, to change, to grow, develop. None of that is done in ease. None of that is done in perfection. None of that is done without a big mess. <laughs> and the only way for a big mess to be possible and to complete our mission and have the plan work is the role of the Savior, right? So that is why Jesus is the answer to every problem. Because whatever the problem we're having, it's just a stepping stone in our development. And the only way to step on the stones and not just be lost in the sludge is through Jesus, okay? So he makes it possible for us to repent. He also makes it possible for us to do anything more than we're able to do in our mortal state. So we're immortal beings, but we're having this mortal um, experience right now for our learning and our growth. And there's no way to learn and grow without him. Okay. So that's the plan <laughs> in a little summary real quick, right? So we are eternal beings. We've always existed in spirit form. God was glorified, immortal, and perfect. He wanted us to be like him. We wanted to be like him. So he created this plan in order for us to do so, we needed mortal bodies and a place to be separated from him in order to be tried, tested, and, and to prove ourselves. So God is good. God made us. We are good. Like I say all the time. It's my favorite. 
And we're mortals in this mortal probation, which involves sin, death, and everything else involved with these bodies. So we have our agency. The atonement can help us with those choices so we can repent. And also the atonement is ennobling through his grace. It's the only way we can learn is to fail. And the only way we can learn from our failures is through his grace. So the point of this life is to learn and how how to fully rely on God. So the whole point is to see ourselves as these, you know, fallen, imperfect beings and to rely on God to become who we've always been, but the next level, right? So when we remember who we are, who he is, our relationship to him, then we can, um, then we can rely on him, have faith in him, have trust in him and be yoked with him. So he wants us to trust him. He wants us to be yoked with him. And there's no plan without Jesus, right? So we'd be thrown down here to earth without any hope, one slip up and it's over for us. That wasn't the plan. The plan was to have a redeemer that can help us through all of our slip ups the whole time. We're never going to make it <laughs> to a state of being able to do it by ourselves. The whole point is to be able to trust in God and be yoked with Jesus in order to make it through. So this plan also makes the suffering make sense. There's there's a reason for all of the illness, pains, struggles, all the drama of this life is for a reason when you can see the eternal perspective that truly we don't grow in ease, that all of the hard things that we have to go through is for our good. And, and we can consecrate it to our good when we believe that. Otherwise, we just have to endure a bunch of terrible stuff and actually suffer through it for no reason. But if we want reason to our suffering, that's not really suffering anymore. It's just enduring, um, knowing that there is a purpose and that can lead us to the growth and purpose that it is. So we're able to make mistakes and learn from them. We're able to be strengthened beyond our mortal capacities when we remember who we are, who God is in our relationship to them. And it makes suffering make sense. Okay, so that's kind of the summary. That's the gist. That was, you know, my whole talk. So Ether 1227 is my faith. So if men come unto me, I will show them their weakness, the weakness of the mortal condition, our state here as human beings. He, I give unto men weakness. Okay. So God created this plan. He knows that this state that he's put us in, he gave us this imperfect state, our weakness, our state as imperfect beings, right? So I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. So we're on this earth in this weak condition and he will make those weak things become strong unto us as we trust in him, are humble, believe in his grace, that it's sufficient, have faith in him. That's how we make weak things become strong. So we learn in Alma 7 that, of course, we know that Jesus is here to take upon him our sins. There's so much more than that. So he went forth suffering pains, afflictions, temptations of all kinds, pains, sicknesses, and he took upon him death and our infirmities and our sins. So all of those things so that he would know how to succor us. So God came down to earth and took on a mortal body also so that he knows what we're going through in our mortal bodies. He's felt every feeling we feel. He knows about emotions and about and about all that goes with these mortal bodies. He suffered temptations of all kinds. He was perfect, so he didn't um, do anything with his emotions or his temptations that, um, that was sinful. But he knows that we will. <laughs> and that's the whole point, right? Is that he's come down in order to take upon him our sins. And so let's tap in. <laughs> let's let him be the answer to all of our problems. So it all sounds nice in like a Sunday school lesson kind of way, but like you hit the ground and <laughs> you're like, come back into real life. And it's like, no, life is hard. Like all day long, there's frustrations and suffering and pain and trials and temptations. And, and like, like, where's Jesus now? 
in the, he's there, I promise, in the midst of all the muck. He's there with his hand outstretched to lift you up and help you out. And I just love being able to have the honor of being a conduit to help you tap into his grace, his power, his strength to help you through your problems. So like I said, you can get help on a coaching call. Coaches will help you make it through this mortal life because we're helping with the mortal problems, right? Helping you with your thoughts, helping you with these emotions, but really like he who's been through it all is the answer. And so, like I said, I would love to be that coach for you that reminds you of that. If that's of interest to you. If you would love to combine tapping into the power, the power of the in, enabling power of Jesus Christ, of the atonement of his grace through coaching, that's what I do. <laughs> and it's so fun. <laughs> it's... um. It's um, it's kind of like um, like a solid technique of how you know, because I know when I used to teach class at church, it was like every single class it was like, okay, this sounds nice, but how, <laughs> you know, and so it's so fun to have found a solid actual how, but it really is all leading us back to He who is the how. Jesus Christ is our mediator. He is our redeemer, our savior, our deliverer. Our, he created us. He's the anointed one. He's our advocate. These are all his roles in this plan of salvation. And it is happening all around us all the time. Whether we know about it, whether we believe it, it is the plan and it's happening. So if you need help, reach out. I'd love to help you. So, um, I'm doing these free relationship boost calls right now. And something interesting I've noticed in people's relationships is um, when they think about the kind of relationship they want to have with someone, there's a lot of, in their action line, it's time. They want to be spending more time together. And so as we build our relationship with Jesus Christ, how much time are we spending with him, asking for his help, thinking about him, praying and and really being with him and tapping into that ennobling power that helps us with the struggles of our day-to-day -day life so you know they say that um the way to spell love is t-i-m-e right so we're always trying to tap into more love it's his love that we're that we're trying to feel and share with all those around us right and feel towards people so as we think about our thoughts that are helping us generate love for other people. What are our thoughts towards Jesus himself? And how is that helping us tap into his love and spending time with him, building that relationship? So these are things that we work on in coaching. And I would love to give you a free relationship boost call where you can boost your relationship with any earthly relationship, or if you want to work on your relationship with Christ or with your heavenly father, anybody you're feeling a strain we can boost it in one quick free call. It's really fun and it's really easy. All you have to do is show up with someone in mind that you want to boost. So go to dropthewar.com and you can sign up for a free relationship boost call. And I will see you there. Thanks for enduring my, um, my half-gone voice. <laughs> All right. Remember, you are a good mom. It's who you are. You've always been. You've always existed. God created you. He's good. You're good. It's all good. And we're in this mortal state <laughs> where we're making mistakes and learning from them. And Jesus is the answer to all of this mess. So love you. And I'll talk to you next time. Hi, thanks so much for listening. Have you signed up for your RBC yet? What is an RBC? Well, it's a relationship boost call. And I am gifting 365 of these for free this year. So go to dropthewar.com forward slash appointments to find a time that works for both of us. We'll hop on Zoom for a quick 15 to 20 minutes. And all you got to do is have somebody in mind that you want to improve your relationship with. It's fun. It's easy. It's a good time. You're going to feel amazing afterwards and no strings attached. Just come on, have a great free coaching call, and then go on your way. And you can come back for as many as you need because we know it's no one and done around here with relationships. So 
go to dropthewar.com forward slash appointments to find a time that works for both of us. And let's get boosting those relationships. See you there. Bye.